Winemaking is like turning pottery. It doesn't matter what color you paint it, it's getting the wall thickness the same all the way around. We, we produce wine, we don't make it. God makes wine, whoever she is, you know. screw tops instead of cork. We're, we're just trying to prevent any variation from bottle to bottle. Cork is all over the board. No two bottles are the same. Once you ram a piece of tree bark in it, they all seep air at different levels. I asked Mr. Talbot one day, how much defect do you think we get from the cork? And he says, oh, I don't know, 10%? 10%? That's fraud. We know that we're ripping off our customer and we sit here and talk about it kind of flippantly. But the reality is if one out of every 10 bottles I'm producing, look how much I spend on this stuff. Yeah. One out of 10 barrels is garbage. And it's ridiculous. And, and the term that most people use when they taste the wine that's off is it's corked. Yeah. In the good old days, wine was pretty cheap. If it was corked, it wasn't really an issue. Now people are, you know, Romani Conti at 2,500 a bottle that's corked. Better, that's a little different yeah, animal. You better have a good, a good lid for that. All right, so so um, we're about to, to unscrew one of the caps here. Yep. yep. And uh, which which one are we trying? So this is our Cayley Heart. This is our least expensive wine. Very little winemaker influence. This is supposed to be like a pure pure fruit expression wine. And and it stays on the oak less time than yeah, some of the more. Yeah, and only about ten percent of it goes into oak. About ninety percent is stainless steel fermented. I see. So yeah. so just. But everything goes through malolactic fermentation. So it's kind of an oddball in that sense. And and malolactic. Fermentation means what? Fermentation. There's a lot of malic acid in the grape. And this organism eats malic acid and excretes lactic acid. So it's a malolactic bacteria. The lactic acid is a very soft acid and malic's a very hard acid. Hmm. So after the malolactic, it's creamier, softer. It sounds like making sourdough bread a little it's, bit. It's a little more, it's, it's the same organism. Well, this is, this is a, a wine that's good, it's real zippy. It's good with cheeses. I know uh, we're, we're going to have it later with pizza. That's the Hawaiian pizza, which is with the pineapple, et cetera. And this yeah, you really can, yeah, play and into and that bacon whole. And things like and there's that, a yeah. lot of pineapple character to the wine, oh. so it's kind of I'm kind of looking forward to see how that tastes. Well, taste it. I want to taste it first, you know, just by itself, and God, then I love see the how it changes. Cap. It's so easy. Yeah, if I could say that. This is like a huge breakthrough. Yeah. But now sure. you, the first thing you did was you smelled it. Now you're you're aerating it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And winemakers swirl everything. It's it, it, it's to coat the whole glass to increase the surface area. So if you coat the whole glass, you can just smell more. You can smell more. So it's all. Yeah. So we're getting pleasure strictly, from the it's aromas. It's strictly surface area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, and I'm noticing that little pine. You were talking about pineapple. I'm getting a little yeah. pineapple hint of aftertaste there, uh, and that's the pleasant. And and there's an acidity to it. Mm. It's really got a, a very beautiful fruit characteristic. And for me, I love the balance of the wine. It, it, what what you smell is what you taste. Yeah. And, and yeah. There's, I a, get there's that. a continuance of the whole process. I, I'm, and then I'm going to try it with cheese now. So. I'm going to be putting two different things in my mouth. Something that's very kind of rich and yeah. and and milky with, and, and it has its own lactic bacterial flavor profile. Yeah, it's with, kind of fun because both cheese, wine, and bread are all dependent on microbes to to, to perform as well as salamis. And that's part of the fascination with fermentation these days. I think is it transforms ingredients from one thing into something else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this wine tastes totally different now when I have it with the cheese. Yeah, you, I now mean, you're creating a real complex experience. Yeah, I mean, first of all, the, the acidity of the wine has gone down. I'm not tasting that bite of yeah. the acidity. This cheese uh, is, is from Bel Gioioso Cheese Company, who's, who's uh, given us a lot of cheese for this uh, expo that we're at today. Wow. It's, they call it Italico. It's, it's, a, it's a unique cheese that is kind of like what they what some people might call Taleggio, uh, a little bit of a Munster quality as well. It's creamy, it's soft, and yet, because it's not sharp, what I'm getting is, is that it's balancing the wine again in a different way. It's, it's smoothing out some of the edges of the wine and making the wine taste, it's giving it more of a satiny yeah, quality. And, and, and I kind of think that a, a cheese with a really lot of sharp character might overpower this wine a little bit. Yeah. Whereas with the Pinot yeah. Noir, it's got enough horsepower to stand up to... Yeah, because if we use the blue cheese, cheese that's here, it would be a totally different experience. Yeah. 
Now, what would happen if I had this wine with, say, the meat, the salami? Is it a wine that you would recommend, or would we go more for a Pinot? I would that? probably go even for the more heavy-bodied uh, Chardonnay. Okay, so let's try the, the second Chardonnay, um, and we'll talk about what makes well, that we, different. What we can do is just throw the wine right in here, because, uh, oh, or, or drink this. it, either way. I hate doing this, but I've, I've got to save some. It's 100% Sleepy Hollow Vineyard, and this is really a spectacular Chardonnay vineyard. And, and of course, we're in Sleepy Hollow Vineyard right, we're right now. Right in the middle of it. Part yeah. of the Talbot Vineyard. And this vineyard is known for its Chardonnays. This is one of the great Chardonnay producing wineries in the country. Correct, yeah. And you see a lot more oak influence in this wine. I smell the more woody. Uh, more, yeah. more of that buttery character that a lot of people associate with, with Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have the as much acidity. Because, in the yeah, world of right. wine. There was a contrast in, before. In a sense, in the world of wine, there's structure and then there's tension. I think a, a cheese pizza would be all structure. Uh, a margarita pizza where you start to put basil on it, that creates tension. And this is a culinary principle that contrast is so important, both in presentation and in flavor profile. Yeah. So we've got this wonderful Italian salami from uh, La Quercia, uh, and they're, they pro provided us a lot of cured meats mm. for the festival. So we're gonna try this wonderful Italian salami with this wine. Mm, this lamy by itself is fabulous. Mm. Yeah, now this wine suddenly, it kind of pops in a different way. There's a whole different pop going on here. It sh I'll say this, it really improves the wine. It makes the wine suddenly I open up. I more agree. I wouldn't want to say that, but I'm glad you did because it does. Yeah. All of a sudden the wine just it has sort of yeah. a vibrancy. So when I tasted the salami by itself, the meat by itself, I loved it. It was delicious. I tasted the wine by itself. It was really good. It was smooth. But when I tasted them together, all of a sudden, the wine just kind of came alive in my mouth. And it it really me. added fat to the wine and it allowed that fruit character to stand out as, as unique. Yes, you know? the meat itself is a cured, it's a, in a way a fermented product yeah, as yeah. well. It's been transformed through aging, through curing, and bacterial activity is going on in there to make this digestible and to bring out flavors. I want to try this now with a more sharp cheese and yep, see if yep. what happens. This is a, a um, Bel Gioso um, blue cheese By itself, really good. Not a not a sharp blue cheese. Not a heavily ripe blue cheese. Now we'll have it with a little bit of wine. Interesting. Here again, I think that would be a better better with the pinots. Yeah. Uh, uh, the creamy on top of the creamy, and certainly the blue cheese overpowers it in the end. Yeah, I agree. Bit, and, and, and it doesn't bring out the best in the wine. The cheese did not bring out the best. In the wine.